This is a Hot Pie Original. We've all made fun of Greg Abbott, the governor here in Texas. We've made fun of him having anonymous donors to build this wall and then the little the little uh, tractor that it looks like somebody rented from Home Depot building your wall. But this is a story that I don't know if he meant it to almost sound like a Coen Brothers movie, but a lot of the characters in this start to sound like a Coen Brothers movie. It is Simon Wood, who has a story at Bloomberg Business Week, or Bloomberg Business, The Builder, The Border, and The $30 Million Boondoggle. Everyone should read it. I think at some point you find yourself being sympathetic of the characters at the same time stepping back and saying this constant steady drumbeat of this border wall is a joke. It's a joke unless you've lost a lot of money. Simon, can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. I didn't mean to. Is it fair that I set this? I'm going to let you set up the story of this character because people in the state particularly with now what what has happened most recently. That is the governor saying, oh my gosh, we're going to take donations. And it's 300,000 or 800,000, whatever the number is, it'll put maybe three bricks in the wall. So people here have now reached the point of almost laughing at this. And then your story about, I don't mean to say a poor sap, but this character who travels to the border, who even says, this is, I believe he says at some point in your story, this is the next Hoover Dam. Describe this guy, describe the situation, and paint the picture of this Coen Brothers-like movie. Yeah, actually, the question of whether he's a sap or not is a complicated one, and I'll get into it. But on one level, he's a sap. On another level, he's cashed in almost more than anyone in the Trump era. And so anyways, this is a story about a guy called Tommy Fisher, who's a who's a big builder. He's got an Arizona based infrastructure company, roads, dams, bridges, highway interchanges, like boring stuff, stuff you never hear about. Anyways, Trump comes in 2015 saying, I'm going to run for president based on the idea of building a wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Now, put aside for the fact that half the border was already walled off before he was even elected. Uh, by the George W. Bush and Obama administrations. Put that aside, this guy Fisher, like most of us, doesn't really know that. He's thinking, great, this is this is government contracting. This is bucks. So he starts pitching the Trump administration on a big, beautiful wall. He's got this prototype, that prototype, you name it. Anyways, for for whatever reason, he's not getting he's not getting any uh, any love from the Trump administration at the start. He's getting rejected. So speaking of border wall donations. Along comes a little group called We Build the Wall. Yeah, this is this is Steve Bannon's group. Yeah. This is you, you, your readers. It sounds like you and your readers are familiar with We Build the Wall. I, this is a group that has now <laughs> been, in, you know, indicted by uh, by a, by uh, by the U.S. Uh, Southern District of New York for essentially ripping off their supporters. Yeah, so they raised. Oh, uh, trust know. me. I and when that uh, initial yeah. pitch was made publicly. I'm doing a talk show and I'm ripping it saying, are you kidding? Does anyone really believe this stuff? And yeah. of course, the yeah. you know, the listeners and the viewers that bought into it, are you jackass, you jerk, somebody's doing the right thing. And I say, you morons. Has anybody even been down there? You can't pull this off. And so sure enough, they are deceptive at best and possibly fraudulent, correct? Correct. Deceptive yeah. at best, possibly fraudulent, allegedly fraudulent. Yeah. However, they managed to, with that money, Fisher ends up being their builder, this guy that the story is about. So this is all the preamble to what's going on in Texas. But so they build a, a half mile spurt in Arizona. Uh, sorry, in in, uh, in Sunland Park, New Mexico, which is basically at the like the triangle of El Paso, Texas, New Mexico and New Mexico. Um, and uh, it's a tr- it's a tricky area. It's in the mountains. Right. A lot of people border patrol says a lot of people are crossing in that area. It's a, It's a tough engineering job and they do it. They decide, let's go bigger. Let's go to the Rio Grande Valley, which, as you know, is where the predominantly where the big immigration surge is happening right now, near McAllen, Brownsville, you name it. So they they find a plot of a land on a sugarcane farm. They lease it and they make plans to build three miles um, private wall. Um, right at the beginning of this process, the money stops coming in because allegedly they wasted it all on like a boat or like jewelry or like mortgage payments or whatever they were accused of spending it on. But Fisher, to his credit or to his detriment, whatever your perspective, decides, uh, I'm just going to do it on my own. And at, at this point, 
at this point, he's starting to get contracts from the Trump administration. So he ends up he ends up getting five border wall contracts by the end of the Trump administration worth two point five billion dollars. And he starts building. And so this guy's got federal. Finally, it's working. I mean, this guy was on Fox News. He was on Newsmax. The president watches those channels. The president was saying, why don't we give it to this guy? Yeah, he seems great. And meanwhile, he's he's connected with Bannon and these guys. So this guy's already, you know, he's not. And I'll get into it. He's not a political guy. He's not a kind of, you know, uh, right. Yeah, but, but, he, but, but he was but, donating, though, wasn't he? Was he? Donating? Bit, yeah. OK, OK. To, to his senator, to, to Kevin Kramer, his North, he's originally from North Dakota, to a senator. No more than any other, yeah. I think, savvy uh, federal contractor would, would would donate. I mean, not not in a way that would seem egregious. I and mean, it wasn't you know what I mean? So anyways, this guy does it on his own. And my story is about the fact that he's finished it. He spent over $30 million of his own or his own company's money, he says. And now Biden got elected. Biden's not going to buy this wall. Yeah. Border Patrol is not going to take it as a donation. The, the thing is politically toxic, obviously. But he's saying, hey, wake up. We've got a border crisis. I've solved it. And he's basically saying, not only have I done this on my own, but it's better than the federal version that I was building <laughs> right. on the side. And that's the tension. And that's where we are right now. Okay. So... Um I mean, it just at, at every stop. I, and I don't know that it's fair to say this guy is well, he's connected to the Bannon group, which is, as you said, people buying boats and, um, you know, hookers and you name it. I mean, these guys are I it's like from the Cohen brothers. I don't think. OK, I, okay. Love, I wish I wish there were hookers. I don't remember hookers in the indictment, but okay. I love that you added them. Well, it's just, uh, it, is this Cohen brothers like cast of characters doing yes, all this yes. slimy stuff? And right, one it, of them's a triple amputee. Yeah. War veteran. And, and he's got the sure. wife or yeah. girlfriend that does, uh, I don't know that she's ever worn anything but a thong bikini in her pictures, right? She's everywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a Golden Brothers cast. So here comes this yeah. guy, as you portray, seemingly a pretty serious, genuine dude. And even if somebody wants to, even if the pe people of Texas who we laugh about this, I mean, I don't think people understand what kind of area, how big this is. That, that, you know, Greg Abbott doing this latest version is, is comical. You have at most $800,000. I have no idea how much they really have collected. But even if you had $8 million, what, do you, what is this wall going to do? $8 million at the, at the rates that Trump was paying to build his wall would get you about like two-thirds of one mile. <laughs> exactly. So um, Now, Trump, Trump seemed to have wasted a lot of money. Like Trump basically spent fifteen billion dollars, or allocated fifteen billion dollars to build about the same amount of wall that Bush and Obama spent two point five billion on. So part of that, it just seems like it was a lot of waste. Part of that seems like he wanted to build a big, fat, scary wall that was bigger and fatter and scarier than what had come before. So if Greg Abbott wants to build a chain link fence or like a white picket wooden fence, <laughs> it, it, you know, he could do something on the cheap, but it's not going to be what what Trump and Obama and Bush were building, which is, you know, steel bollard, 18 to 30 foot tall, um, you know, serious fence. A, a serious question would be for someone who says, don't laugh at this. We really need a wall. We really need a wall. A serious question would be, OK, let's yeah. put aside the cast of characters and the sliminess. And let's just say the guy, this Tommy Fisher guy or anyone else for that matter. We have no idea who's going to be hired to build this newest one. And of course, we have no idea who that is. But let's just say a legitimate character who can really build stuff was going to pull it off. It would cost how much and need to be how large, how long? That, that, that 100 that billion, 200 so billion. I mean, it, 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 the numbers, the point is the number is gigantic, correct? It's gigantic, and it's also complicated by the peculiarities of the Texas border, which your your listeners know a lot about. I want to get into that in a second, because actually, in a lot of ways, the whole question of how America does border security is totally uh, screwed up into oblivion by the fact that tech, the Texas border is so different from the New Mexico, California, and Arizona border. But before I get into that, the cast of characters thing, it's funny, you said Coen Brothers, yeah, the whole thing is like this weird Coen Brothers-esque absurdist pastiche. But um, this guy, somebody read it and told me that he came across like the Ted Lasso of border <laughs> security. And I actually think that's right. Like that's you've got to cool. separate him from the Bannon people yeah. because he opportunistically glommed on to them, in my opinion, and on to Trump because he saw dollar signs. And and I think he's a, he, fairly shrewd in that way. But his demeanor and temperament is all Midwest nice. 
I mean, goofy to the point of, you know, Ted Lasso meets Bob the Builder meets you name it. Like he's a big, serious government contractor, really rich company, but he doesn't have that sharp political edge that the Bannon people do. And so he's got this like, hey, bud, come on down. You know, I mean, after the piece came out, he called me just to say that his, you know, his mom liked it. I mean, you know, I, it wasn't, it, he, he's a genuinely friendly guy. And even though I took my shots at him, he said, okay, this guy was fair to me. He laid it out. I'm going to give him a courtesy call. I mean, just to give you a sense, he's yeah. not, he doesn't have that hard, sharp edge right. that your average border hawk does. He's just thinking, hey, I, I'm the guy to build this thing. If someone wants to build it, I'm going to build it. And now he's in limbo though, because- Who's going to buy this thing? Is it going to sit there like an albatross? Okay, so yeah, so let's just take a look at you know his. I think you're saying it was a sincere attempt, and still is a sincere attempt. I mean, he did this yeah. because he wanted his company to to succeed, or he did this because he's a MAGA hat who wants to stop the border search. Which one of those things right. is he? Right. So it's the, so it's the first one, but he's also not soft on border stuff. Like he's a mainstream conservative who basically thinks we need to be hard, you know, harsher on the border. Okay. So he also thinks, hey, look, if I can, you know, if the runoff of this is that I Im- improve border security, great. And so he's thinking, yes, we have a problem right now at the southern border in Texas. And no matter how you dice it, I mean, the Biden administration is also freaking out about this. Sure. Because you've got, you know, June had 188,000 people come over across the southwest border. That's the most in recorded U.S. history. 15,000 kids, I think, right now are in um, in migrant detention camps, Central American kids. And so however you dice it, there's a problem. Now, what's the solution? Is it loosening the asylum laws so that more people can come in? Is it tightening the border? So, you know, are you deterring? I mean, that's where the the politics gets into it. This guy leans on the side of let's keep people out because uh, the cartels are profiting. And anyways, you know, this, you know, you can't have undocumented immigrants coming over willy nilly. That's his position, basically. And so he's not a MAGA hack guy, but he's also not a liberal. I mean, let's be clear about this guy. So I'm just laying out his personality. Yeah. OK, it, but yeah, l- let's let's go. He needs the, he made money on federal contracts. So he's yeah. on the plus side. So I guess the question would be, ah, I screwed up and lost 30 million, but I made two point two billion or whatever. I'm out, man. I'm going to move on. I, I don't. I'm. When you read this, you come away a little confused. Is he out trying to sell this to get thirty million yeah. back, or is he trying to sell to get thirty million back to win another contract? Why doesn't he just say, "I'm out, man. I'm getting out of here now. Let's stay away from this thing." I don't know. He's he's doubling down. However you think about it, he's doubling down. So not only does he want someone to buy it, I don't know who he wants to expand it. So he, I need. We need to get into what he did because what he did is very different from what every other builder wall builders ever done in the in the 30 years since walls have even existed between the u.s and mexico but he wants to expand it into like a 300 mile network throughout texas um and the reason he wants to do that uh, a is to recoup his money um but b because texas is virtually unwalled i mean new mexico california arizona almost all walled it's because the federal government owns most of the land down there and then they own this 60 foot wide strip that allows them to build whatever they want on it for the purposes of border security. Texas, almost none of the land is federal. It's all owned by, you know, thousands of tiny weird parcels and there's the Rio Grande. So A, if you want to build there, you've got to convince ranchers, homeowners, farmers, whatever, to give the land up. Second, you've got to convince them to give up a strip of their land that's probably going to be a mile or so inland because you can't build right on the banks of the Rio Grande for various like bureaucratic and legal reasons. So it's really, really hard to build in Texas. And so this guy's instead of following the government rules, he just ignored them and built right on the Rio Grande. <laughs> so his, his, one of his big innovations is that he just built like 30 feet from the river. Nobody's ever done that because the government sues you when you do it. So the government is so the Trump administration sued him as it was giving him federal contracts, like two different branches of the Trump administration <laughs> were like at odds. And then Trump himself ended up tweeting against the project last yeah. summer yeah i remember vaguely remember the tweets ripping the builder i, I guess most yeah. of us didn't know it was him but again mm-hmm. our knowledge in texas is it becomes almost kind of a joke at these people attempting to do this stuff because most of us know how complicated and difficult it is not we're not denying that immigration is an issue it's just this wall thing is laughable yeah. but he, i remember him tweeting something like how it looked was stupid and it was sinking into, <laughs> it was sinking yeah. into the mud or something like that and that was this was guy? Like, he was making fun of this guy? He was. This was a Texas Tribune article back in like August or July of 2020. And first of all, it made me laugh that Trump was like reading like a Texas Tribune article. Um, 
And so he saw it and he was like, this was done to make me look bad, which just makes absolutely no sense. Um, but he did basically he had this instinct of like, uh Oh, like this is a PR problem. I'm going to distance myself from okay. this thing. And you know, I think it hurt Fisher's feelings <laughs> since he'd been <laughs> basically trying to build this guy's wall for him for the last five years. Um, yeah. Okay. So this sincere Fisher character, you've done a very yeah. nice job of, of painting the picture. He ended up with three miles, laws and rules be damned, sticking it in the mud, deal with it, got three miles, now is left hanging, wants more money, and now he's got Greg Abbott saying, I'm going to, you know, Abbott and Trump are down there looking at each other, smiling, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. They have this ridiculous news conference at the border. It seemed ridiculous to most of us. So is he calling Abbott now and saying, "Look, man, I, I'm I got some stuff going on. You want to buy my thirty? You got thirty yeah. million on you. How, how is that yeah. transaction going to play out?" Yeah. So he's basically the Abbott thing was kind of a lifeline because yeah. I was with him down before that happened, and he was he was showing me these like PDFs he had printed about like you know this is what I'm going to do. Like we're going to expand it. Maybe we could actually add a bike lane to it. Like he had these like crazy <laughs> moonshot ideas about like maybe turn it into like a a park with like fields. <laughs> like he was really thinking like, how can I sell this thing? And meanwhile, it's like, I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, you know, th this guy's got some ideas, but uh, who's going to buy them? Like who is going to, and then, then anyway, Abbott comes along in June, sees a political opportunity, right? Yeah. You know, sort of slam the Democrats on the border. Anyway, so Fisher hires, he tells me he hires the former head of ICE and the former head of CPB, Tom, Tom Homan and Mark Morgan. And he's contracted them basically as lobbyists to try to get the ear of Greg Abbott. I have no idea if they can do that. And I, there's a money issue, which is that like Texas is not going to raise $30 billion. Exactly. I mean, here we are months after his pitch. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. donate here. And yeah. they've got, yeah. you know, who knows what to believe. But last report was something like $800,000. Yeah. Well, I think the t I think the state said they're going to allocate 250 million. Yes, they shifted the disaster own. funds, which is an issue, yeah, by the yeah. way. Uh, right. But yeah, there's so so. Does this Fisher guy think he's got Abbott's ear, and you know he's going to get the contract, even though it's eight hundred, only going to be two hundred fifty and some change? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my instinct is it's going to be really tough because the, the thing he's building, it's an 18 foot tall bollard wall that's got like all these bells and whistles. It's got like these con these nice paved concrete roads and lights and cameras and whatever, whatever, like amenities. Um, it's expensive. I mean, he wants to charge 20 million a mile. Okay, so even if <laughs> even if uh, and, and that includes maintenance costs, like, you know, for him to maintain it, if even if all 250 million dollars went to it, what is that to, to like uh 10 miles yeah yeah like so that's not even not factory ideal. that's not even factoring what building materials now cost yeah although he might be who knows yeah right 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 but he might be so anyways i think he's trying uh, you know <laughs> this guy's all but the moonshot it seems unlikely his comment the, this guy did he joke would he did he mean it as a joke when somewhere in your story he says this is going to be the next hoover dam yeah, he, he didn't exactly say it like that, but he was basically trying to ex explain that he's like really drawn to these massive infrastructure projects. And he was like, I think of it as, you know, the next big and incredible infrastructure, historic infrastructure projects. So he didn't say verbatim, this will be the next Hoover Dam. He did, however, say this is the Lamborghini of walls, uh, <laughs> which is hilarious because like you don't think of a Lamborghini yeah, as something that's like, yeah. really, like solid and tall and like sturdy. Um yeah, I, but he want, he he's drawn to these historic things. It's a kind of funny contrast with him because he's this kind of like down home, like folksy guy. You know, you could imagine him just like piling around with a family watching college football or something like kind of normal. Yeah. And then he's like, I want to build the next massive historic infrastructure pro project, even if it's the most politically polarizing thing of all time. Like this isn't just like the, I mean, the Hoover Dam maybe was controversial at the time for X or Y reasons, but it wasn't as controversial as a border wall between the U.S. and Mexico. I mean, you can't think of a more polarizing project than that. 
is he just hanging around now down in South Texas uh, making phone calls? I mean, there's somebody with his own company. I mean, this guy did have a fairly successful, have a successful company. Yeah. And I mean, do they say, hey, boss, can we just go back to North Dakota and just do what we were doing? What are we doing down here? We're not going to get Honestly, the gig and we're not going to get paid enough. We're, we're, let's just write it off and move on. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce, now in all 50 states and several retail outlets as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to let this social media rock star chef uh, walk us through Four different sauces, and then I'll taste, and we'll tell everyone why they should buy. You can give the science behind yeah. these, and then I'll make the uh, the simple recommendation. Go to atxhotsauce.com. All right, so let's go. I don't so think heard the website yeah, I know. I know. you, Jeff. <laughs> I've never yeah, that. Is atxhotsauce.com. I'll say 345 right. times, atxhotsauce.com. So let's do it. Uh, I brought four flavors here, and we're going to test your palate today. Okay. And I only brought four because I didn't think you could handle five yeah, or six. Yes, probably a smart move. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the first one we're going to try here it's called Beet Heat, and just like the name implies, beet. it beet it has beets in it. It's made with red Fresno peppers. Red Fresnos are uh, red peppers that are uh, they're hotter than a jalapeno and a little bit less than a serrano. So not super hot here. Uh, just a lot of good, really good flavor. So we're going to start All with right. this one, and then we're going to move up the chain. Okay. I've had the Beet Heat, but okay. Yeah, we're going to try it though. We're it goes try it well. Here. It goes well with a cab. All right, Jeff's savoring beet. I'll heat. even do it with you, so that should be all right. Now remember, it is hot sauce. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's hot sauce. Trust me, man. Wait, it's that hot sauce. Is that one hot to you? Um, no, no, no. A little. Yeah. The, the, no. the great thing with the fermentation process is you get a bunch of the flavor right up front. Yeah. And then the heat comes, but then it dissipates pretty quickly, especially with the red Fresnos. You know, this is not a very spicy. Uh, one, but it is um, a very tasty one. Goes on great on sandwiches. Beet heat. Beet heat. B e e t heat. All right. Go to atxhotsauce.com. That's right. He did say something to me. Like his kids are on the board. I think of his company now. He, he's fifty one, and his okay. kids are adults now. And they're on the. I think they work for him. And he said something to the effect of like they're kind of like dad. Like why? <laughs> Why are you doing this? The clock, it, it could, who knows? Maybe it's a midlife crisis. You know, maybe this is his version of the uh, of the Lamborghini. So if somebody picks up the phone and says, okay, hey, Tommy, good dude, yeah. good ideas. Love, I saw the wall. It's beautiful. You're really good at what you do. What, what are you trying to sell me? Tell me what's the sales pitch, why somebody would buy three miles of a border wall that's stuck in the mud. He'll say, he'll, he'll sort of, He'll hammer you with with information and stats. He'll pummel you with engineering words that you've never heard of until you you just give up. <laughs> like he'll just be like, oh, like you don't even understand. Like we've got this galvanized, no rust, no dust steel solution. We've got this, uh, you know, blah blah blah, this and that. Like the guy knows his engineering stuff. Oh, we've got we've got a five to one graded slope. Uh, you know, uh, once the grass comes in, it's actually you know like, take care of the erosion problem. Like if you start going toe to toe with him on the erosion stuff on the engineering stuff on is this thing going to fall into the water he's always got an answer for you will it fall into the water i don't know i mean he's saying it'll last a hundred years other people will say it's going to fall in the water in three years like i, I don't know i mean yeah. I, I was there it's not a, it's not a piece of junk let's put it this way this guy's a federal contractor it's not yeah. a piece of junk he didn't just stick you know there's, you know, it's it's reinforced with rebar. It's got this concrete foundation. On the other hand, like there have been, there's been like uh, massive water surges on the river, and I can kick my foot under the wall, and there's like crumbly little dirt. Like there was a moment where like the whole foundation under the wall, you could kind of look under it. You could even crawl under there if you wanted to. Like there have been times where it did not look great, and I think there's a reason why people don't build on the river. I mean, it's yeah. It's, I mean, even Trump it, called him yeah. out on that. I mean, the rest of us even thought, yeah, it's a legitimate point there. Does it even does it work at all? There's three miles. There's three miles. Is it even remotely effective yeah. in stopping? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. So it's um, it, if it stands up, if it stays up, it's going to be more effective than if the three miles were set back on the levees. Yeah. So in most of Hidalgo County, the the border wall that does exist are built on top of of dirt levees, and those are like a mile or so north of the border. It's not stopping anybody, basically, except to get like further into McAllen or whatever. Um, and I was talking to a retired Border Patrol agent who that was his area. I mean, he patrolled that sugarcane farm before the wall went up. He patrolled it after the wall went up. What it did is it diverted tra migrant traffic uh, east and west of that wall. 
So a net net, it probably didn't have an effect. But certainly, if 30 feet in front of you, there's a steel barrier, what's easier to go up or to go around? Yeah, obviously to go around. It may it had, you know, there was a guy who lived across the military road from that farm. And he says that he's trying to sell his property because for 25 years, pe- you know, smugglers and, and, and women and children, whoever have been coming across the property. Once the fissure wall went up, they started going around. And I mean, I think his neighbors are pissed at him now. So it's not like there's fewer migrants total, but coming in that stretch for sure. So that's number one. Like, yeah, I mean, if you scale that up, if you were able to to wall the entire 2000 mile border, like, yeah, it would have an effect, obviously. <laughs> like it's easier to cross where there's no wall than where there isn't. Yeah. However, there's a, there's an asterisk to this whole thing. Ever since 2014, the, the migrants coming over are not illegal job seekers from Mexico. These are asylum seekers from the the Northern Triangle in Central America. And they're not looking to escape anyone. They're looking for for border patrol to catch them essentially and then process them and then apply for asylum. So as long as your wall is not sticking in the river, as long as it's on US soil, all you gotta do is walk up to the wall and sit and wait for border patrol to come get you if you're an asylum seeker. And almost everybody coming over is an asylum seeker. So on some level, no wall, whether Fisher or anybody else builds it, is going to do anything about preventing asylum seekers from coming over. Right, right. Even if you could, what your point is, even this is what I think people of Texas largely know that the rest of the country doesn't quite get, that mm-hmm. if you could wave mm-hmm. the magic wand, the Trump wand of build a wall, and you could do it in six days, you're saying even if you could do it in a week for you know, $10 billion, the 2000 mile wall isn't going to do what you think it's going to do. It's not going to do what Trump seems to think. And that is keep quote, keep everyone out. Right. It's not, it's not going to do it in Texas specifically. Okay. Now, if you, if you manage to do in the other States, you can build right on the wall. Yeah. If you're an asylum seeker, it's harder. This is, you'll see these video clips. Like people will try to hoist their kids over this wall in Arizona because you need to get to the other side in Texas. You just need to cross the river. I was on the river. I went out on a boat. I, I commissioned, I, I chartered a boat just to see it. And I saw like 40 migrants coming over in a raft, women and children, almost exclusively. Once they hit land, they were looking to get found. They were looking to find a wall or a border patrol agent to take them and get processed. You could build, you could blanket the entire Texas border and it wouldn't do anything because you can't, you can't prevent them from, it's going to be on U.S. soil that that's built. It's not going to be built on the border. So once you hit U.S. soil, you apply for something called defensive asylum and you're in. That's the asylum laws. I mean, you're not in permanently. Later, you'll probably get rejected by an, an, by an immigration court, but that could take years. The, the, the cases are backloaded. Like it's uh, it makes sense to try to come over in Texas right now. And what? no wall is going to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. You know, Greg Abbott's newfound Trump-like mentality about the wall is pretty interesting to watch politically. But we all, I think we all know what, he's, what, he, what he wants and what he's going for. He's sort of running for president right now. He announced yeah. it was either today or yesterday. And since you've been down there, you can speak to this. We, the state of Texas, and I guess other states have done the same thing. He's empowering the National Guard to arrest people. So you're going to be charged with trespassing now. Um, sure. I, I, don't, I don't know... What that number of, I mean, it's going to be quite a few people. I don't know, but he bragged about it recently. And then today it was announced there's going to be more national security guards that will arrest you and charge you with trespassing. Well, what does that do and what does that look like? And for the taxpayer of Texas, what does that really solve? I have no idea. I mean, I, that is, it's, it's going to generate lawsuits, certainly, from the ACLU and other groups. Sure. I, it, Which it's I, think he, I, think he wel- I think he welcomes. I don't think he's bothered. I think he, wa- uh, he does, sure, he's yeah. not bothered by that. I'm not talking about if, in fact, they do what they're instructed to do and they start charging people with trespassing, what happens? Well, the weird thing is that right now, that I don't know how much of that is a stunt. It sounds like a lot of this is in the stunt genre, but like... Uh, the weird thing about that is that most people coming over right now <clears throat> are getting turned back. Yeah. So unless you're a family or unless you're a Central American minor, you're basically getting turned back. The Biden administration is turning people back, like I, I want to say like 80 percent plus. Um, so anyone who would be a trespasser is first just going to get apprehended by CPB and they're just going to get sent back to Mexico. They'll probably try again. They'll get a cartel coyote to, to get them over again. And the cartel's delighted because they get more money. But if if what what that means then is that are they are are they citing like women and children for trespassing 
in which case like i guess that's just like a fine they're gonna have to pay yeah. or like does it go in their permanent record and make them seem like criminals it that sounds ticky tack i can't imagine yeah I, I mean i, I, I think most people have should be cynical and skeptical of anything that he's saying right now because it really comes off as a stunt i just didn't know since you've been down there if there's some you know if, if you were to take him sincerely if it was really that practical to just start ticketing people and arresting them <laughs> You know, I mean, how much money are we know. really going to collect? I mean, how much money are we get? If it's a $250 fine or something like that, how much of that are we really going to be collecting? Um, or, or, what, or what happens? Of, <laughs> like, or what happens these to folks, I don't. I have no idea. That is a new one. I mean, that's a new one. But, you know, I'm, I want to ask you a question. I'm curious. Yeah. How have attitudes shifted or not about border wall construction in Texas, e e among even among conservative Texans? Like, what's the general sense of the utility of this kind of project? And uh, have thoughts about that changed over the last five years? Um if you were all in MAGA hat, even those people in Texas still try to buy into it's going to work. Most mm -hmm. people here know that's a joke. You, even if you think the right way to keep people out, as you said, is a wall. Most people of every political stripe know that a wall is just laughable. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. Are you kidding me? Where's the money coming from? It, it feels like a running joke. There yeah. is no debate. There is and has been for not just six months, but for 25 or 30 years, ongoing debate about what to do. I think most reasonable people here would say that wall is no one thinks for a second that really works. Then you're left in the other standard debate that honestly has not changed in 30 years. It's the same so, arguments. Right, and so the politicians that, don't, the politicians don't really, like? the, the politicians don't really want to do anything. I mean, we, yeah, we can debate. Hard. Yeah, we, I mean, th this conversation could go on four hours a day, every day for the next 20 years. And it would be the exact same conversation. Yeah. Nobody, really flo nobody really floats a plan. Honestly, and I would say this maybe because I thought it was a pretty good idea. Nobody has floated a comprehensive plan except for George W. Bush, and it went nowhere fast. Yeah, he what, honestly tried. And you're talking about a comprehensive immigration plan, not yeah. just a border security. Yeah, not plan. not, not yeah. just a border security. This, this is just the ability of governor after governor after governor, Abbott, Perry, fill in the blank. The next one, whenever that happens, will be the same of them looking cool and sounding tough. I'm going to spend more money on the border is the political sales pitch. Lieutenant governor right. did it when he ran and he was talking about helicopters and boats and guns and dogs. It's just a promise. I call them all Josie Wales from the Clint Eastwood movies. That's what they try to act like. And that does yeah. resonate with the MAGA hats. They just like to hear the talk. Nobody yeah. really believes it works. They just like to hear the talk. There's your answer. Yeah. yeah. So my, my, rec I'm, my recollection is foggy on this because it's a while ago now. But my sense is that Obama tried to do a compromise where he was like, OK, in exchange for the, the DACA, the deferred action for children, I'm going to ramp up border security, like right. ICE. Uh, you know, enforcement. And so there is this, I feel like even on the, on the democratic side of the aisle, there's been a kind of softer version of this where instead of doing deterrence and doing border wall building, they do enforcement, which is the ice stuff. But the irony is that politically the ice stuff ended up looking even worse because like, right. In a way you could actually build wall more quietly. And in fact, you know, in the early Obama years, they, you know, after, after a 2006 immigration bill passed, the Obama administration was building wall, uh, in 2009 and 2010 and no one really paid that much attention to it but the ice arrests looks that looks bad yeah. for a lot of people um and so but i think that was the general vibe they were like okay we're going to try to get a path to citizenship we're going to try to be humane towards kids that have been here uh, or kids that came over when they were young um and we're going to step up enforcement and that i think that was his version of a compromise i don't know right it sounds like what you're saying is from texas there's no second version of that it's just no the enforcement no and there's stuff. there's no a, there's no political the political appetite is the same as everything else um if you're a democrat in the state you don't really offer an idea you just say oh those people are mean if you're a republican in this state you just try to sound and look tough and not you know yeah. that's like this wall thing it, it it's a joke it's i remember the day that he pitched this idea i said who is falling for this garbage who are you that believes you're going to voluntarily donate money and build a wall? That worked out so well for the last guys that tried it. They're on no, their way I to prison. Believe, I couldn't believe the donation thing because it was just like, it made me feel bad for the donors. Like all these these folks who put their hope in this project with the Bannon group, I mean, they raised close to 30 million, I think. Right. Who knows where, where it went, allegedly. Um, and now these, these folks in Texas are doing it again. It's like, 
ah, fool me once or whatever, you know? Well, that's why you're not going to get a big number. I mean, no one's that stupid. I mean, it is their hard-earned yeah. money. And, um, you know, surely they paid enough attention to know that this is, this, the fact that it's only 800000 should be a political liability for him. But yeah. he gets to, yeah. I mean, it should, but that but he gets to say tough stuff and act like it's going to happen. So this Fisher guy, does he think yeah. he's going to build the wall for, He's going to get hired by whatever money Abbott raises. Is that his end game here, the state of Texas? I don't know. He's got this weird way of kind of um, – every time I call him and talk to him about it, he's got this weird way of kind of sell, selling himself. It feels like he's selling himself all the time, like some kind of eternal optimist. This is where the Ted Lasso thing comes in, where like he's almost like a like a, like a new age like zen master wall builder, where it's just like, like if I think positive thoughts, this thing will just happen for me. <laughs> But, you know, the end of my piece, he basically said, I kind of confront him with the idea that, like, hey, look, the odds are against you here. Like, it, it, this is going to be really tough. Like, and he says, you know, worst case scenario, I protected three miles of the southern border. That's, and so there's some weird part of him where it's like he, he believes enough in the project. If he ends up losing money, he did something he believes in and um, you know, he got but, some notoriety. But has he it, you know? said, is, uh, right. I mean, has he said, you know what? Governor Abbott, uh, I got, I'll get 28 million and whatever you, when you raise 28 million, would you just buy it from me and you can have it? Does he view this thing as his property to sell? No, it is his property to sell. Yeah. Okay. He bought, so, so he, the he people bought the of Texas could, could he's paying taxes on it too. Okay. So the people of Texas could read your story and say, well, yeah, look, if we're looking to, for some wall, at least we can buy three, three miles from this guy, right? Theoretically, Greg Abbott could buy his wall, even if he doesn't build the other 300 miles with the bike lanes that Tommy Fisher envisions. Um, he, uh, oh, there's the no, there's no the, better bike trip than uh, the Rio Grande Valley when it's 112 degrees. That is, that is yeah, a not just trip. that, but with like destitute Central Americans, like trying to raft over as you're like biking <laughs> with your family, like right on the other side of the wall. I mean, he showed me this rendering, which was, so, it's so pie in the sky. It was like the river, it was like Mexico, the river, the wall, a bike lane, a border patrol truck. And there was literally bikers with little helmets next to a green and white BP truck. And I just thought like, this is, no one's ever done this before. Like, however, you, this guy, like he's special. Like he, this is, nobody's ever thought to like, hey, could you make me a mock-up? Uh, I want a, a BP truck next to a bike, a bike lane. So this guy wants 300 miles of this kind of thing. Anyways, even if that never happens, yeah, conceivably, Abbott could say, you know what? I like this project, I'm gonna buy it. I don't know exactly why, because if it's there anyways, if you believe that it's making a difference, I don't know why. Yeah, it's not like he can take it. it back and say, until you pay me, you can't use this. Why right, don't we, right. why, why don't we just take the guy's it. wall and put a flag of the state of Texas on it and move on? Exactly. You could. I, In a way, I feel like it's going to be, It's the likeliest scenario, I think, is that it sits there until it falls down, <laughs> if it falls down. And uh, okay, so when I think it, fall, it will. Yeah. So is, if you had to project out five years, is this really cool looking wall without the bike lane? Is it going to be in the middle of that water? I mean, is some landowner going to say, hey, someone needs to get down here and get this thing out. It's rusting and it's going to hurt someone. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean, will someone just like rip it out? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. No, I don't think it would. I, oh, unless you mean it would fall into the river yeah. and then it like cause a major problem because yeah. it could go down. Yeah, it could go down river. Yeah. I don't know the engine. You know, there were these engineers who came in, but they were they were commissioned either by various litigants against Fisher. Oh, there's a whole other saga about this butterfly sanctuary that's suing Fisher, which is like a whole other branch of the story. They're like right up the river from Fisher and they're not happy about the wall. Um, and I just think like the symbolism of a, 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 a like a big, bad border wall and butterflies like could not be more like potent for this whole story. Wait, what's the problem with the butterflies? Um, Again, can't the butterflies fly over it? What's the issue there? there? Uh, it's it's unclear. Basically, the the director of the Butterfly Center, who's quite a political person, like if you go to the National Butterfly Center Twitter feed, it's like extremely aggressive and political <laughs> in a way that you would not expect <laughs> for butterflies. Like you're there like trying to go to the, the sanctuary and then like you read the tweets and it's like more MAGA, like Ted Cruz. And it's like, wait, wow. Anyways, she's basically saying that if she's saying that in the event of a flood, De the, the wall could act like a dam. So like debris and muck and whatever and water would bunch up on the dam, diverting water flow towards her sanctuary. And that would like, you know, I don't know, flood the habitat or whatever. Okay. The butterflies themselves, yes, theoretically would not be imperiled. 
Um, but this is this is a version of the argument that like the U.S. government made because when they sued Fisher too, they were like, "This is this could move the U.S. Mexico boundary line. If this serves as a dam, and you're not allowed to move the boundary line according to the you know whatever Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo." So they're saying this could move the boundary line. This is why you don't build on the floodplain. He says, no, 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 no. My engineers say it's fine. It's going to be all right. Don't yeah. worry. Oh. So one day, post-hurricane, it's entirely possible this thing is moving downstream. Yeah. yeah. Or it could fall in the other direction, too, I guess. It's like <laughs> topple over onto the sugar cane field. I don't know. All right, Simon. Uh, it's, a, it's a great read. It's interesting. It is... Um, it's, it's this compelling border story. Uh, I know you've written some other stuff. We'll, we'll talk about some other things some other time, but I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, thanks, Simon. Simon Wood, the story is the guy who spent $30 million building Trump's walls looking for buyers. From the Hot Pie Media Studios in Austin, Texas, it's the Jeff Ward Show. Listen at jeffwardshow.com.